Hot 97 Morning Show. Uh, we are here with a young man coming out of, uh, you said the east side of Chicago? East side of Chicago. Lil Bibby. What's up, what's Bibby. up? How you doing, sir? Good, good, man. Y'all got me up this morning. Man. Listen, this is what the real work world <laughs> is real like. Work. Hey, I'm used to it. You what? sure? Hey, I'm used to it. You sure man. you said you ain't you still hanging out smoking weed and talking tough? No, nah, none of that, man. <laughs> you, got, you was out last night? Huh? No, nah, I, I got in at like 9 o'clock. I got off the flight. Okay. You ain't go to Griffin last night? Didn't go anywhere, He's 19. Man. Then I, He can't even get in the club. Y'all need to get me in, Griffin, man. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me. I don't do anything. How, wait, have you ever had a... Uh, did you ever have a regular job as a teenager or anything? Nah. So you've never done the regular... Oh, I guess waking up for school. Yeah, that's about it. How'd you do in school? Nah. nah. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> it was that bad? Yeah, it was that bad. Did you finish? No. Nah. Yeah. So the stuff you... I've heard some of your music, and the reason... You know, a lot of times I hear young cats, MCs coming out, and I just, I'm not impressed with the music, right? Yeah. Um, the reason I had you come up was because I heard something in your rhymes that I don't often hear, which was clarity in your rhymes and your words, right. as well as you were changing your flow like every 16 on, on a couple of songs, that I, yeah. which most people just flow the same way the entire yeah, song. Yeah, that, that shit gets boring, man. So you what? you knew to do that, though. Um, I don't know. I'm big on the flow patterns and stuff. I, I don't like keeping the same flow for not even the whole 16. Right. You know? I, like when a beat break down, I try to, you know, just spice it up a little bit. I like add a little bit more dy dynamics to the rhyme, you know, switch the flow up and put a little bit more energy in there, you and know. You tell yourself that or oh. is, did you get that from somebody? Um, no, that's just what, what that's I how do. you hear it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's something to be commended. It's called art. That's it's an called artist. an artist. In the lyrics, you talking that gun slang and dope talk. Is this real life for you? Yeah, it's real. <laughs> Everything I say is real life. <laughs> so, I mean, some people just telling stories about things they see. Some people is telling they real life. I mean, a lot of the stuff, if I don't do it, one of my brothers do it, or one of my little cousins or one of my homies do it, you know? So it's all real life. I see it firsthand. So it's not necessarily that every song that you say is specifically what you're doing as much as it is a depiction of things right. that are I'm around, around you. it every day. So, so. When you, like for the low, you're not saying that you were personally having a drug sale that week. No, no. That, that, <laughs> that's selling a ton of low. <laughs> but is that something, hey, that, something hey, you see? <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's good to record the fact that you are currently having a... How do they, a blowout sale. Well, but how else are you going to promote it? We're not currently having a President's Day sale <laughs> on, on cocaine and crack and heroin. Yeah, um, it's but not an MLK white sale. That's different. Why'd you have to bring it's MLK? Wild, I'm just wild. saying wild. a white sale. That's when they have white sales on that Monday. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, Sight. There's a couple tapes you have out, right? Oh, I got one tape. It's called Free Crack. It's just, just. Excuse me? It's called. Free crack. <laughs> so not only do you have it for the low, but now you're giving it away for, for free. free. <laughs> Musical crack in this case. Even. What? Oh, it, it's an it's a metaphor. Yeah, in this oh, case, yeah. a metaphor. All right, I like it. How? Um, what was your introduction to the game? Because I, I a few different people who I respect in music reached out to me about you. So how is it that you came to get in the position that you're in? What was um, your your story? I don't know, man. I just been putting out music, man. A lot of people just been reaching out, like. Kevin Durant, um, you know, Drake Cole. Um, well, people just, just hearing you. Yeah. And, and they reached out. It? Yeah. Maybe exactly. they heard what we heard. <laughs> Who was the first artist that you collaborated with? Did you start out in the uh, Chicago scene that we all associate with Chief Keef and Lil Reese, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. Me, Reese, and Keef did a track a long time ago. And then I got some shit with Fredo, but it mostly just be me and my homie. His name Lil Herb. So we just do a lot of shit together. And Project Pat, I did some shit with him. He was like one of the first people to reach out to. Why is the name Little so popular? Why is everyone so small? And you're not, you're you're not even person. small. <laughs> why, why do you have to be little? You should be big. You're six feet tall. You're not little. I don't know, man. I don't know what it like is. Like when Lil Wayne <laughs> came out, he was like, I'm Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne's a short person. He's still little. It made sense. Oh, so what you think I need to, what, Big Bibby, huh? Yeah, <laughs> see, now you talking. At least medium. Medium-sized Bibby. <laughs> medium to large Bibby. That makes probably sense. Around the people, like his, his brothers and all that he was saying, he's probably the little, the, the one in the one. crew, yeah. No, it wasn't even, now I don't know, it just flows better, man. Little Bibby, little Bibby, you can't say Big well, Bibby. Well, you can't, I mean, you can't do Mike <laughs> Bibby either, because he was an NBA star. And I, yeah, can't hey, that's that. that's kind of how I got my name anyway. 
Why? Cause you well, you're a light skinned kid. Nah, I used to play basketball. I know how to shoot real good. You know, my homies just called ah. me Bibby. Oh, so they called you Bibby because of Mike Bibby. Yeah. Oh, and so then, then he's little Bibby. Bibby. I got it. So now, now it makes now, sense. You know what? We take it back. You're There's, little Bibby. You're our little Bibby. <laughs> Why is little Herb little Herb though? He only has a little bit of Herb left. <laughs> is his name Herb? Uh, his name. Yeah, I don't even know. Is it Herbert? <laughs> well, I was about to say because I, I don't even know if young are young people even aware that for our old asses, the term herb has a negative connotation. Like if somebody's well, herbing you, like you're a herb, that means like you're you're a, you're a dork. You're a nerd. like herb's bad oh, to man. old people. What's that? That New York slang? No, yeah, like 90s, 90s, 90s hip hop slang. Hip-hop, yeah. yeah, 90s hip hop. Well, like it was like hamburger biscuit herb. <laughs> All of those was like, yo, you're a biscuit, G. Yeah, but I'm sure Lil Herb, uh, based on what you guys talk about in your songs, I would never tell him this to his face. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago and where you're from is a lot of violence. As a matter of fact, it's uh, all in the headlines all the time. Yeah. And then your music is a lot of violence. What, um, in your perspective, are you just telling the story as you see it and what you're going through? And do you get heat from people who are like, yo, you're promoting violence that's already bad in Chicago? I just tell it how I see it, basically, like... Uh, I don't get no heat because I don't promote it as like it's a good thing, you know. I'm just saying what's going on, mm-hmm. you know. And people kind of respect that because they, I, I don't glorify the shit, you know. So I kind of get like a little bit more respect than a younger guy. Now, you know? but would would those same critics say that some of the your other associates who you mentioned, like Reese and Keith, are in a different category? Because I would say, in my old man estimation. When I've heard some of those records from Keith and Reese, those guys, they do. It certainly doesn't seem like it's not promoting violence. Right, right, right. Like, there's do a you, lot is of there, shirts off in the apartment? There's guns in there. Guns like, is there around. something that separates you from that stuff that you think is plain that, to see? Um, man, I, I did a lot of hustling, man. That's that's what I try to <laughs> make the music about that mostly, but. The killing man, that's what my. I don't want to talk. No, yeah, don't get into specifics. Yeah, we don't want to do that. But that's not for you. You were in the hustle. That's why you talk about hustling, because that's the part that you know. Yeah. I know all that, because, you know, I, I got brothers, I got homies, you know, and it's all. That's what we do. We do, all, you know. I was just big on the hustling thing, so, you know, that's what, how I try to keep it. What, at what point, you're only 19 now, but moving forward, at what point, it, it, being from a city that is so plagued with so many problems and young people that do follow this music and potentially are influenced by it. At what point, like, do you think there's a time when you musically have to go a different direction to try to, you know, for the betterment of kids your age and younger? Um, or is that just not someplace you're at yet? Let me tell you something about 19-year-olds, not to cut you off a little bit. Uh, the future for them, and I don't know, maybe you could speak to this, baby. Do you think about the future? Because you come from some, pl- you come from a place where the future ain't always... An option. Mm. Do you even think about the future? No, don't. Me or nobody don't think about the future. You know. Really? You just live. You know. Damn. Oh no, that's it's crazy. Uh, so, how, what are you thinking about? Like, when you're making music, like, why do you want to put out a mixtape and then an album, whatever? Like, just to get funds to do more hustling? No. Nah. <laughs> I do this to us, so I don't gotta be around that shit no more, you know. Oh, so you did? So that you do have a, like a goal to like get out? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that is inherently thinking about the future. I mean, if that's the goal to not be around that, that's future. And honestly, that's more than a lot of people your age might say. People don't always come out and say, "I want to talk about that shit," so I can not be around it. A lot of times, people. I'm getting money, nigga. I, I seem, we fucking these bitches, nigga. <laughs> they seem content to be around it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's pr- more, I guess for me, being the old man, I, this is what I said. I said this summer. I don't try to be the old man now. I'm the old he's man. The, you are the old man. Everybody play their position. Who's sorry. The sorry. Y'all, he's the, the oldest. He's the old man. He's the oldest. I'm the, I, and I'm the father. <laughs> and he's going to be a father soon. So, But musically, Ebro, I'm sometimes even older than you. Well, no, 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 no. You're... Uh, stuck in a time period. No, you're in a time capsule. I'm not in a time capsule. I like new music, but what I'm saying is some some new young music I don't identify with, and like some of the Chicago music was hard for me because I'm hearing about violence in songs. I'm seeing videos depicting violence, but then I'm turning on the news and I'm seeing this shit's really going on. I'm yeah. like, I'm kind of too old to it's be able old, to ignore man. it. It's not old. It's your environment where you grew up. Right. You don't understand. You're 19. 
is not the same as his 19. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. can tell just by looking at him. Well, yeah, Your that's 19s for sure. are very different. But either way, for whatever that's it is. That's a 92 year old man right there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, are you, so you're saying growing up in the hood is like dog years. Every well, year is like seven well, years. Well, you definitely grow up faster. Well, I'm just saying from my perspective, it, it's it's been hard for me to kind of appreciate some of the music that involves this violence that I, I then really see happening in yeah. Chicago. So I guess it's nice for me to hear, you know what I'm saying, that you're, you're detailing your stories and some of it is violent um, or it has to do with drugs. But the fact that you have the goals of not being around that, I, I, I find positive. I, I see that as a positive thing. Yeah. Because I just feel bad. I mean, being from my circumstance where I never had shit to worry about, seeing these kids and the circumstance they're in is weird. It's like I live in a different fucking country. I didn't oh, grow yeah. up around that at all. So, yeah, you probably won't relate to that shit like that. No, I can hear I can hear beats I like. I can hear flows that I like. Yeah. And Miss Info just told me, a Chicago native, Miss Info just told me that she the thing she loves about you is that she thinks you're one of the most dynamic rappers she's mm-hmm. heard. She said she said that you can rap in the way that, uh, in the same style as a lot of the Chicago cats who are out now, but then she also compared you to a young Chris or Petey Crack and someone who really can like go in rhyme, rhyme, rhyme yeah. more than just turn up arms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, where did that come from, the, the, the interest in different styles? I know we talked about the decision making and when you make a rhyme, but influence wise, who are the artists that you love coming um, up? I'm a big fan of like Drake, um, Jada Kiss. All right. Um, Jay-Z. Rick Ross, so Wayne, I like Gucci too, you know. <laughs> so Gucci's there too, though. It's all over the map. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's kind of. Uh, well, what about people from Chicago? Anybody influence you in Chicago? Bump like Jay, Bump J. That's one. Bump J. Yeah. Wow. How do you guys feel about um, Kanye West? Kanye West, yeah, I like Kanye West. That's still the. Yeah. You guys claim him. Yeah. As you should, young man. As what you about should. Lupe? Lupe, yeah, he's cool too. Um, is he just cool, or do people like, like with Kanye and Lu- would Lupe get love in the hood? If Lupe comes back to yeah, the he block, pull up at the chicken spot. Is he gonna get love or um, why is it gotta be? What time, why does it have to be the chicken? Lupe. Because he had an album called Liquor and Chicken or no, something. Food like that. and liquor. Food and liquor. There was no chicken. The food you was racist. chicken. <laughs> the food was chicken. <laughs> I don't really know about Lupe like that, but from what I heard, like uh, yeah, I heard like he still be around. Yeah. And what about Ye? If Ye showed up, he'd get mad love? I don't think Ye yeah, so. <laughs> you know, nah. Ye ain't too, too famous, man. If you, if, you, if you were him, you wouldn't show up. No, nah, man, the whole city. You're not bringing out. Kim K over there. <laughs> no, nah, man. Yo, if Kanye brought Kim K to the east side of Chicago. Yeah, he thought it was bad that he got racial slurs thrown at him in a chiropractor's office. You don't want to show up to the south side of Chicago. <laughs> God. Do you feel like you have a good grasp on... How the how and why the violence has escalated? Do you feel like you understand what's I mean? Because gangs in Chicago, something that's been around for decades, even in New York, but it seems like over the last few years it's escalated. And I thought and was told that it had everything to do with Cabrini Green being knocked down and them dispersing people to different neighborhoods. Is that how you see it? No, I don't think it got nothing to do with that, man. It's just um I don't know. Like in the last couple of years. It's, everybody got guns now, man. Ain't no more fight. Ain't no more fist fight. No arguing. Nothing, nothing like that, man. It's guns come out right away. Uh, yeah, guns. Is See, that, here's the thing. I feel like guns have been around, but it seems like now it's more consistent as people going right to the guns. Yeah. We, we kids, you know. We, what, 13, 14? Guns. Playing with guns, yeah. And it ain't no big homies to tell you, like, stop this, let's get money, you know? Well, yeah, but that the, piece right there, I was also told is a big issue. Is where, are the the, big homies, where are the big homies? Where are the older men? Yeah, it's not. Where are they? they in the feds somewhere, <laughs> locked up, boy. They either. If, if you want to get money and you're an old guy, you got to get out the way, man. Because <laughs> these young, you know. We they just pushing the old men out the way. Yeah, exactly. And in a violent Because there was something you said also, Ebro, about like a lot of dudes came back from jail. Well, yeah, I, to... I was hoping that he would give me that, but he may, because you're only 19, may not be able to articulate it that way because you're a part of the young part. But I was also told that a lot of the OGs went away 10 years ago doing Fed time. Yeah. And now, over the last two years, they've started releasing these people who were doing time, and they're coming home trying to go back to their old ways. And that corner yeah, is over. And it's over. over. It yeah. ain't theirs no more. No. Nah. And they can't get it back. They can't. You're not gonna be like, okay, we held the spot for you. Here you go, sir. Yeah, you end up getting hurt, man. <laughs> Just get out the way. 
You want to get, get a job? Just get out the way, man. Or do your thing. Low key, don't even mess with Do you guys have a retirement program where maybe we can start <laughs> helping them out where they don't feel like they need to go back to that? Maybe we could put, like, I don't know, maybe a, a nice little a Roth fund away. You're talking, about a, you're talking about a drug dealer's 401k. Something yeah. like this. Yeah, I don't know if they do it, that. It, it, I mean, maybe. No. It, it, <laughs> He's it like, nah, nah, nah. It ain't really no money in Chicago right now, man, for the, for the people that's hustling or shit like that. So there's mean? not even a lot to go around in the first place. No, nah, man. So everybody's so just fighting on the scraps. Yeah. What, what's up with the curfew over? Huh? Is the curfew over? <laughs> I don't know he shit about that. He doesn't know or care. I guess the curfew wasn't effective. <laughs> <laughs> Musically, we, and with your rhymes, we like what you're doing, and we'll watch this progress, and we appreciate you being so open and... Y'all yeah, gotta check out that mixtape, man. I you don't tell, even think y'all yeah. heard it. I've only heard a couple joints, man. I gotta, I gotta say what the whole thing is called. Free Crack. Free Crack. And people get that anywhere. Huh. That Piff. That Piff live mixtapes. Anyway. I feel some type of way about the title. I can't front. Free Crack. Like, we're just gonna go Free Crack. He's giving it out. It's Crack, and he's giving it out. All right. I'm so old. <laughs> you are old. No, you know, when they, first, when they first get the Crack, they go to the hood, throw it up in the air, the samplers. It's free I, crack. And see, I know this. That's from The Wire. I saw that on The Wire. You just saw the wire. Relax, I just started it. I relax. just saw that piece. You're so just, white. It You're just happened. You're so white. Man, you from the suburbs or some shit, huh? <laughs> That's right, I'm Lil. glad you figured that out, baby. <laughs> That's right, little baby. That's right. <laughs>